Okay, so I have a little bit of a confession to make. Uh, I've had this office for a really long time and I don't really clean it quite as much as I should. You see, it's not that I don't clean my office. It's actually fairly organized and I do use a vacuum once in a while to just take up whatever debris is on this hardwood floor. But the one thing that I've pretty much never done is this. I have a paper towel here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of water on it and then I'm gonna wipe the floor a little. Take a look at that. It's a dirty floor. I have never really mopped this hardwood floor. Uh, and the few times that I have, it was just like spot cleaning the entire floor. Definitely needs a nice deep mop. So that's the reason why I was excited to try out the 360 S9. It's actually sitting at its dock right now, waiting to be used for the very first time. I already unboxed it, so I will go through some of the box contents and some of the features of this smart vacuum. But one of the main things that I loved about it is that it comes with a wet mopping feature. There's actually a water tank in there that I'm gonna fill up a little bit later and I'll let it go through a few different passes so that I can actually mop this floor for basically the very first time. So shouts out to 360 for not only sponsoring this video but for also helping me clean my office, something that is way overdue. Now you saw that there are a lot of parts to this entire thing. You have the 360 S9 vacuum itself, a bunch of spare parts, uh, and then the charging dock, which you saw me install over on the side wall. Now the remote control that comes with the S9 is one way that you can control it, but of course there is an app that you can download from the Google Play Store and also the Apple App Store. Obviously the app is gonna be very useful for the Wi-Fi connectivity that the S9 has. I have it connected to the Wi-Fi in my office, and even if I'm not in my office, I can remotely tell it to just do some cleaning uh, even if I'm not around. Now this next thing you can do in the app as well, but I like that the remote control can also work like an RC control. You can actually control the S9 using the directional buttons and make it go forwards, backwards, left and right, whatever the case may be. It's kind of fun to be able to do that. But here's the thing, while I'm recording this first part of the video and while I get a little bit of extra work done, I am going to let it run one time throughout this 500 square foot um, office of mine. It's a very simple, just sort of open space. It doesn't have to do too much to map the area. It's going to use its LiDAR sensor in order to create a saved map of my area with the different obstacles that are in it. Uh, and then I'll be able to use it to not only clean up the debris on the floor first, but then I'll fill up the water tank, install this little mop attachment, and I will actually get a wet mop onto this hardwood floor. Now the first thing I'll mention as it's doing its first ever sweep, uh, the thing is it always knows where the charging dock is. It was like the first thing that it ever did was check for the charging dock. Uh, so yeah, uh, as you can see in this clip, it knows exactly how to get around the charging dock in the map. Uh, really nice and the sensors seem to do a good job of making it just sort of go around obstacles. And also, as it turns out, according to the app, it is this is the quiet mode. I don't know if you can actually hear the vacuum going in the background. Let's see what Max sounds like. Okay, definitely louder. Now the whole objective of this first run, aside from a first clean of course, is for the LiDAR and ultrasonic sensors to actually map out the office. At the very least, map out the bounds of the office and then along the way in future cleans it will find obstacles and just go around them whenever needed. I recorded a bunch of clips of it going around various obstacles and there are plenty in my office. I did find that the obstacle detection was very good. If the front portion actually hits an object and it triggers the sensor there, then of course it's going to move around, rotate and try to get around that obstacle. But there are also the ultrasonic sensors that give it a little bit more spatial awareness than just the one sensor on the front that bumps into things. Also, the instructions do say that you have to pick up many of your cables or any cords or any just like small objects that might be on the floor because it could of course get tangled inside of the 360S9. Luckily on this first run for me, it only got caught up on a couple of small things. One was the strap of a backpack that I just had lying around in front of my television. Sorry, buddy. There you go. Uh, and then the other one was actually the case for the Galaxy Z Flip that I didn't realize fell underneath the couch. Uh, leave it up to a robot vacuum to remind you that you're not looking in more nooks and crannies of the office when you're cleaning it. Especially for somebody like me that has tripods and light stands and these blankets here for sound uh, that are supposed to stay in one place. One thing I do have to keep in mind is when this thing runs, it'll nudge everything ever so slightly. So I had to reset it if you didn't notice in that previous clip. This right here is super cool. Look at how it was able to map my entire office. Now, obviously the bounds of the office are a little bit different than this like big rectangle that I'm actually sitting in, but that's because of the obstacles that I have sort of created in building my office, especially that big, uh, uh, 
area of like all the boxes and everything I need to discard. Uh, the TV back here, of course the kitchen-ish area, the tea area I'll call it. It took about half an hour to clean and thus map the entire area for that first run. Okay, so here's the moment of truth actually, because I do have to turn it off. I'm going to bring it over here. Uh, it will dirty the table a little bit, but I should check how much debris it actually picked up. How much dust rather. Honestly, I'm a little bit worried about this. <laughs> so there's this entire flap here at the top that I just have to lift up like this. And there's a dust bin that comes out like so. Looking in it, it actually, it actually looks pretty normal. It looks like a, a decent amount that I would have in this office after maybe a couple of weeks. And the other thing is, as you can see, there's the HEPA filter here inside of the dustbin. Uh, so it's actually catching a lot of that dust as it is vacuuming around. So everything's kind of localized to around where that HEPA filter is. All right, let me go ahead and empty this out and then we'll fill up the water tank and see how the mopping goes. Well done. Now you know why I have an air purifier pretty much running all the time in the background nowadays. Next, we have the water tray. Now, here's the thing. I'm gonna stay in my office for a little while while this happens, and hopefully it's not going to like smear dirt all over the place, but then again, that's the reason why I have to come back, empty this out, clean out the water, let it do it again. It might take more than one pass in order to get this floor actually uh, spick and span. Okay, you can see that there is water in this tank now, ready to be used. The other thing I have to do is put the mop um, attachment on here. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. You see this right here? So this is the mop and you can actually detach this. Comes off via Velcro and whatnot, uh, but this is going to help the mopping mode for the vacuum. So let's just slide this on. There you go. Water tank goes in. And then it makes a beeline for the charger. That's really cool. <laughs> All right, so it's on the charger. One quick thing that I'll mention is that uh, in half an hour of cleaning and actually getting all of this stuff mapped out in my office, uh, it only took up maybe like 15% of the battery. It went from like 75 to 60%. So I don't even need to let it charge that much because for the size of the room or the office that I have, you could probably do like two or three passes with whatever charge is left. Now there are a few different settings here that we can mess with. Like uh, we can say we want a high water spray, we want a low water spray. I would say we'll keep it medium for now. After all, it's not like this is the only time I'm gonna do this. I'm going to make sure that this thing runs at least once every so often, uh, maybe twice a week or something like that so I can keep this place pretty clean. And then we're on vacuum and mop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with just the mop mode. Uh, so with that in mind, we're going to hit mop on the bottom here. There's a button that says to mop and it's going to get started. Now, obviously this is the second run, which is the mopping mode for the S9. Uh, and this time there's not going to be any suction happening because the vacuum portion is turned off. And of course, after it did the first run, it knows the bounds of the office. So it knows where the walls are, even if it's going to figure out its zigzag pattern a little bit later. So the first thing it did was actually make a perimeter. It went around what it perceived were the walls based upon the mapping. And then from there it hit its zigzag. Since this is the wet mopping mode, I did make sure to pick up some power strips and some cables that were just kind of lying on the floor, just out of an abundance of caution, uh, but it did not really get stuck in that many places. One part that it did get stuck on was just the sloped angle on the legs of one of my tables. It just sort of jumped the curb a little bit, if you will. Uh, and even though I felt like I should just kind of grab it and put it back down on the ground, I wanted to see what it would do. Sure enough, it kind of spun its wheels for a little while, but eventually it kind of revved up and went in reverse and it was able to get off of not just that table leg, but also the bottom of a standing lamp that I had right next to it. It's time for... One thing I should mention, I probably will not actually be doing this very scenario where I'm working while the vacuum is going. I suppose it might happen once in a while, but because this has Wi-Fi capabilities and I have been using the app this entire time, I could actually get it to do its work while I'm not even here. So it's something that I'll probably do more often than not. And maybe it's a little bit of a placebo effect, but after knowing that my floor is literally getting cleaned, I just inspected it a little bit and it does look a lot cleaner than it did before. So I'll call that a win. 
All right, there we go. Back at the desk. I was out here for a little while because I did not want to get in the way of the vacuum, but there we go. It has the map of the area and it went ahead and mopped the entire area, as you can see from the screen recordings that I did while it was doing its thing. And then as you can see at the top there, it did not use up much battery. So it's still above 50% battery. Again, I'm putting this vacuum probably in the best case scenario. It's just one large room and there's a lot of obstacles. So it's just gonna go around them and it's just one real linear path. It's not like I have a bunch of bedrooms or a kitchen or anything like that. It's just one large area that I can do in half an hour. Now, after the mopping was done, I did check the water tank and at medium, it did still have a little bit of water left. So I think I can actually turn it up to high water spray. And even if it runs out, that's perfectly fine. Here's the thing I want to make sure I uh, mention here in the video is that I'm not too sure if it will be able to get some of these stains out of the hardwood, but that's okay with me because at least something is getting done. You saw earlier how effective the actual vacuum was at picking up all of the dust and the debris that was on the floor. And as long as a little bit of water cleaning is being being done on this floor, I'm pretty happy with it because it's gonna happen quite often. It's obviously really easy for me to make the vacuum do its thing while I'm not even here because it is Wi-Fi connected now in my office. And you know what, why don't we jump forward in time a little bit and I can literally show that off right now. So it's been a couple of days since the initial cleaning and I'm already happy with the fact that I have something cleaning the floor in my office. The thing is I'm sitting in my house right now and thanks to the app that I have installed on my iPhone here, I can continue to clean the office even though I'm not there. This is something I already alluded to earlier, but I wanted to spend a little bit of extra time going through the application because it's from here you can see some extra features that make this an even better remote robot vacuum. Of course, we'll start this section off with the basic feature of uh, turning on the vacuum and mopping uh, from the app, even though I'm at home. And as you can see here, it already knows the boundaries of the office. So it will create a perimeter while cleaning first and then zigzag in between those lines. But another thing you can do is specify which areas will get a vacuuming, will get a mopping or get both. See, this is important because the area behind me and certain shots that you see uh, is where sort of the hangout area is. That's where I have the TV and the couch. The thing is, I don't use that area a whole lot because I'm basically working the entire time I'm in the office. So that probably means that the floor there doesn't need the mopping quite as much. So in the app, I would set this up so that I have an area, a square that I can um, enlarge or shrink in order to cover the area that is where the couch is so that that whole area doesn't get any of the mopping treatment. Now, this is obviously in my context. I would imagine that in a household environment, you would pick certain rooms that don't necessarily need to have uh, the mopping or even just cleaning at all, uh, and you would block those off using these tools. But another tool that is available is the virtual wall. Now, this is actually really important for me because I'm gonna show a clip from earlier where the vacuum would nudge all of my tripods and light stands and just areas around my filming area. So I would actually have to reset uh, where everything is standing so that I could film again. In all honesty, it's not that big of a deal, but I decided to create virtual walls that just cover the filming area so that I don't have to worry about the vacuum actually hitting my tripods and light stands. And sure enough, when using these two tools in order to create new parameters for the next cleaning, the robot vacuum literally did not go into both the hangout area and the filming area. If you guys want to see something really cool, I did a screen capture of my security camera that's inside of my office. It also has a night vision mode, which uh, made the LiDAR sensor clear as day. You can see how the vacuum is actually mapping itself and figuring out where it is within the space of my office using the many different sensors that it has built in. That's awesome. So yeah, that's just a look at all of the different tools that you have available inside of the smartphone app when you have the 360 S9 connected to a Wi-Fi network. That way I can be here at my workstation at home and still be able to clean my workstation in my office. It's pretty awesome. Speaking of going back to the office, let's go back to that final portion so I can give you some final thoughts and close out this video. And so there you have it, an overview and the first, let's say one or two cleans using the 360 S9 here in my office. And if you want to check it out for yourself, well, it's an easy place to get it over on Amazon. The links are in the description down below. I'm happy to have it in the office. And honestly, I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to cleaning this office, as you can tell. Uh, so it's nice to have a little helper here. That way I can at least have something cleaning up the floor, even when I'm not paying attention. 
So thank you again to 360 for sponsoring this video and honestly thank you for the vacuum because it's a great little addition here to the office. As far as the rest of the cleaning is concerned, I'll get to it eventually. But uh, look forward to even more content here on my channel by subscribing to it if you haven't already. Drop some likes on this video and let me know in the comment sections if you have some sort of smart robot vacuum as well. Did you pick up something from 360 as well? They have a whole line of vacuums. This one is just the higher end model that they have and they were gracious enough to lend me. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you again for watching. Uh, take care of yourselves and each other, and I would just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.